Now, first of all, let me celebrate the uh, progress that Uganda has made on women's empowerment and gender equality in a special way to appreciate the government of Uganda for the leadership at the high level of decision making where we can see a lot of women. It is not a coincidence that we have a vice president as a woman. It is not a coincidence that we have a speaker as a woman. It is not a coincidence that we have a prime minister as a woman. It is not a coincidence that we have the minister of gender as a woman. It is not a coincidence that we have the third deputy prime minister as a woman. We still have a lot to do in terms of promoting access to quality education and health care. We still have a lot to do in terms of strengthening the enabling environment where women can increasingly participate freely in political, in economic and in social spheres. And there's still a lot more to do again, like I said, to eliminate violence and harmful practices against women, against girls, against children. For women to prosper in the economic sphere, they need capital. And when you examine the amount of interest women are borrowing, those loans in the villages, to sell those tomatoes, to sell those onions, they are borrowing at 5% to 10% per month. If we are to empower women economically, is the current financing model working for women or not? Let us therefore use the existing structures at community level, including those of special interest groups, the faith-based, uh, faith-based, culture and civil society organizations as avenues for reaching out to the intended beneficiaries. The support of men is also critical and we need to promote the effective involvement of men in the efforts to attain gender equality. One shots.